We're here in the lab. Uh, we're going to be checking out a uh, three-ton variable speed heat pump today. Uh, what we're going to be taking a look at, look at is the refrigeration, the charge, the refrigerant charge in it. Okay. We're going to pull a panel off. Before we do, we're going to turn the, I'll turn the power off. On the inside of the cover here, you can see that we have a couple of charging charts, a cooling charging chart, which is what we're going to use for adjusting our charge, and a heating check chart. This is a check chart, okay? This is to check to see if your, if your charge is close. You cannot adjust the charge in the heating mode. You have to, you can only adjust the charge in the cooling mode. If it's colder outside and you, you're running in the heating mode, you have to weigh the charge in. You can't adjust, you can't adjust the charge in the heating, in the heating mode. Uh, so we'll take a look at that in a few minutes here. First we'll hook up the gauges and our temperature probes. We're going to hook a high side gauge to our liquid line. And we'll hook a low size ga gauge to the suction port, the constant suction port. Okay, this is our low side line in the cooling mode, but in the heating mode, it's going to be our high side, our high, our high pressure uh, line. This port here is a constant suction, constant low side, constantly on the low side. So we can use this port, whether in the heating mode or whether in the cooling mode, this is going to be the low pressure side. Okay, we've got our gauges on. We'll put a temperature probe on here. I have two probes here. One of them I'm going to clamp on to the suction line. And the other one I'm going to clamp on to the liquid line. Right. Turn the meter on. And right now the unit's not running, so they should read pretty close to the same temperature. 72. 72.3, yeah, they're reading the same, same temperature. That's the temperature difference between the two. That's back to probe number one. Okay, I'm gonna turn the power back on the unit. We'll start it up. Okay, we're gonna make it call for a cooling. Cooling. And we're gonna cool. Drop the temperature so that we make it call for cooling. Remember, we have to adjust the charge in the cooling mode only. Our indoor temperature has to be between uh, 70 to 80 degrees, and our outdoor temperature has to be between 65 and 100. If we're outside of that range, we have to weigh the charge in. Inside of that range, we can use a cooling charging chart that we just saw here a few minutes ago, a cooling charging chart. and adjust the charge accordingly. Okay. Okay, we got a call for cooling. We're gonna wait for it to start up. When it does start, we're gonna see the condenser fan motor. Uh, it's an ECM fan motor. We'll see that condenser fan motor rock back and forth. That's normal uh, for any ECM motor. It's checking its rotation. There she goes. There she goes. All right, the condensing unit is starting to start up. We see the ECM fan motor kind of rocking back and forth. Now it's going to get, start to get up to speed. And like I say, that's normal. Don't be alarmed when you see that. Okay, 
So our cadet is up and running. We can see that our suction pressure has begun to drop, and our discharge pressure is, is begin to raise up. And we'll let it operate for about five minutes, and then we'll check our temperatures and our pressures and see where we stand. One of the things when we're checking the charge on our variable speed heat pump, we have to make sure that the heat pump is in the high speed stage. Uh, if we go to our wall control here, if we press and hold fan for 10 seconds, it takes us into a service mode. We go to equipment, and then we go to status. We can see that our heat pump is running in the fifth stage. There's five speeds uh, to this variable speed heat pump. And we are in the highest speed, the fifth, fifth speed. So that's good. We want to make sure that we're in the fifth speed, we're in the highest speed. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to check the outside, our outside air temperature, the air that's entering our condenser. I have a thermistor out here. Just check it out there, air temperature. temperature or air entering the condenser is about 73 degrees, 72.8, 72.9, so we'll, we'll figure it at 73 degrees, okay? Now what we need is we have to check our subcooling, okay? So let's go back to our temperature probes that we have attached to the lines. Now remember, our subcooling is how much cooler is our liquid line temperature than our saturation temperature in our condenser? Okay, so let's check the temperature of our liquid line, which is lead number two here. That's 88.5 degrees. 88.5 degrees, 88.6 degrees, okay? Now let's check our saturation temperature in our condenser. Okay, if we look at our pressures, we are running about just about 290 pounds of discharge pressure right now, 290 pounds. 290, if we go to our PT chart for, for 10A, 290 pounds, 290 pounds is 291, we come across 291, is about 94 degree saturation temperature, okay? So out here at our condenser, our saturation temperature is 94 degrees. If we cool below 94 degrees, that's subcooling. If we had 93 degrees on our liquid line, that'd be one degree subcooling. If we had 92 degrees, that would be two degrees. So we're 94 out here, our liquid line temperature. Our liquid line temperature is 85.4, so we have approximately 9 degrees of subcooling. We're 9 degrees below the saturation temperature in the condenser. So 9 degrees of subcooling we have. Okay, so let's go to the charging chart on the panel here. Now we have, we're running about 9 degrees of subcooling is what we're actually running, okay? We had about 71 degree ambient temperature entering the condenser, so 71 degrees about here. We follow it up to our line here. We see that we want about 9.6 degrees of subcooling. And that's just about where we are. We're pretty close. That's awful close. Uh, that's an uh, indication that our charge is correct. Now, if we were down here, if we only had, say, 8 degrees of subcooling, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 degrees of subcooling, if we're way down here someplace, that's an indication that we don't have enough charge. We'd add more refrigerant to get it up to uh, our 9 nine and a half degrees of subcooling that we're looking for. If we were way above the line, if we were up here, we had 11 degrees of subcooling, 
that's an indication that we might very possibly be overcharged. We have too much charge in it. We have actually have to remove the charge to bring it back down to the line. Uh, but it looks like right now we're right on the line. That's looking pretty good.